I love a good treasure hunt, and if you do too, watch this whole video. Every 4th of July, Lindsay and I celebrate our country's birthday in a new national park. For our 33rd park that we've done together this year, we decided to go to Glacier. Lindsay did all the planning. She made sure that we hit every corner of the park, and I mean every corner of the park. That's important because in our logical progression from Kalispell through West Glacier up north to East Glacier and back around to Kalispell, I wasn't aware that the northern part of the park was actually in Canada until a few days before we went there. If you watch my videos on TFB TV specifically about bear defense, you probably know that I'm carrying a 10 millimeter Glock in grizzly country with hard cast ammunition, almost always in a very fashionable fanny pack. This time it was a Glock 29 SF and I'm glad I did because we saw three grizzlies and three black bears on this trip alone, including this huge bowl of a black bear, only about 25 or 30 yards off the Red Rock Falls Trail. Now an obvious problem arises when you're carrying said 10 millimeter Glock and you're transitioning from the great wide open free state of Montana to a large penal colony north of the border called Alberta. I figured Canadian Customs was probably going to be on the honor system, but apparently I was wrong as there are legitimate border checkpoints going in and out of Canada along the edge of Glacier. So what was I going to do with my Glock 29 SF of mass destruction? While I was certain that as an educated white male, I probably could have just driven through the border with a Dushka in the back of my rental RAV4, but I'm not about to take any chances, even though I'm sure Canadian prison is probably better than living in New Orleans. And spoiler alert, they did ask me if I had guns in the car when I got to the border. Funny enough, the only thing that they specifically ask you about when you come back into the United States is produce, probably because Customs and Border Patrol knows that Canada is full of fruits. All right, I'm giving my leaf buddies a hard time, but other than the shitty cold weather and the utter lack of freedom, you guys actually have a wonderful country and I love visiting it. All right, so what did I do with a goddamn gun? Well, here's a quick list of things that I could have done with it. Yeah, I did none of those things. The main reason, if you know me, I've got an unhealthy obsession with time, I despise unnecessary delay, and I wasn't about to spend several hours of this already tight agenda vacation calling a bunch of local sheriff's offices to see who would be dumb enough to assume the potential civil liability of holding a gun for me. I could have mailed it back to myself, I guess, but then I didn't want to bother to try to find a UPS in the middle of Montana when I had no cell service. Plus, we still had half a trip in bear country to go, so I wanted my strap back. Best option, hide it along the border. In my mind, fastest, easiest, freest option, which also meant that I could pick it back up on the way out whenever that was. And it was fast, and it didn't cost me anything. So we drove along Chief Mountain Highway, which takes you into Canada, and I found a suitable spot to stash my Glock before I headed to Chile, Mexico. I saw a fence line with a lot of vegetation along the base, which ended up being Perfect. It was a safe but isolated turnout with a number of fence posts and more thick bush than a 70s porno. I pulled over, I got a Magpul DACA weather resistant zipper pouch. Very importantly, I separated the frame and the slide from the gun. The frame is of course the legal serial number bearing firearm and technically the slide and the barrel are just parts. I wasn't sure if these parts were legal or not for me to possess in Canada, but I reasoned that getting caught with a barrel and a slide in Canada would have been a lot less trouble than a complete gun. At the same time, if I left behind a fully intact loaded Glock, that could be extremely unsafe and I could get myself in just as much civil or criminal liability if someone found it. It seemed like the smartest play here was to leave the ammo and the legal firearm behind while taking the barrel and the slide with me. So I threw an Apple Air tag and the DACA pouch just in case I somehow forgot where the gun was or had a hard time finding it. I headed down the hill, stuffed the bag deep in the bushes at the base of a fence post, 
And due to the dark color of the DACA pouch I used, it blended in so well I couldn't even see the pouch when I was standing literally on top of it. We go through this drive up customs booth getting into Canada and of course one of the first questions was, sir, do you have any firearms in the car? I got to truthfully answer no to that. A hundred yards later there's a sign that's like no guns in Canada. I felt like this was just kind of cursory questioning so I would have been surprised if I did have a gun in the car and I got caught bringing my Glock into Canada unless there was some sort of freedom sniffing dog or something at the border that could pick up the scent of unchecked liberty. And all that said, let's say the probability of my getting caught with a gun in Canada would be about the same as the probability of my gun being found and stolen in the woods where I hit it, but the consequences of the latter event would have been much less severe. Therefore, I think this was still the best way of handling my specific situation. So we return the next day to the scene of probably not the crime, and on the 4th of July, very appropriately, I wanted to retrieve my frame immediately. But of course, the rancher who owned the property is driving around in his effing truck looking at something along his fence line. Maybe he's a huge TFB TV guy and he already heard about the Glock frame hiding on his property line. Who knows? So was the gun still there? I turn on my location services to find my air tag, and while I'm doing that, I'm walking down this wet, grassy hill. It rained the night before, grass was still slick, resulting in both of my feet going above my head, falling square on my back. Lindsay wasn't recording, but I was. Oh, f so I've got the footage. I get up, I catch my breath, I head down to the post. Fortunately, AirTag shows up on my phone, gave me accurate directions, walked over to the bushes where I stashed the frame, dug around a little bit, Boom, DACA pouch is still there, thank Gaston. USA, USA, USA. Interesting point, I unzip the DACA pouch, there's a little bit of moisture inside. I love these pouches, and I know Magpul pitches them as being super tough, super durable, but I had one with a transparent window maybe a year ago. I would keep my boat registration in there for my whaler. That didn't last one season. The transparent part started cracking and breaking and the pouch was ruined after just a few months in the dry glove box on the boat. And now, this one clearly got some moisture in it, but hey, it's a Glock. It can handle a little drizzle, no problem. All said and done, no Canadian prison. Wonderful trip, by the way. Glacier's beautiful. And I got to engage in some Bubba Bond spy works on the 4th of July. I call it a W, but how dumb am I? Tell me in the comments. Let's talk about that treasure hunt. Clearly, I'm not hiding a Glock out in the middle of the woods for you to find because I could get in a shitload of trouble. But what I did do is I got an MRE bag. I put a bottle of 12-year-old Canadian whiskey. A little mystery souvenir from Canada. That's totally legal, by the way. <laughs> a little souvenir for you from the hotel we stayed at when we were in Waterton. And, perhaps most importantly, a very, 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 very rare 511X TFB TV patch. 511 made three of these as prototypes. I said that they looked like frosted cookies and I was super disappointed with them, so we never made a run. We only have three. I hid one of them in this MRE bag. Here are the GPS coordinates if you would like to find it yourself, and I've got some footage here to help you find that fence post. You reach down there, there's going to be an MRE pouch with a bottle of whiskey, a patch, and a coaster from the Prince of Wales Hotel for you, my friends. Just hit me up on Twitter or Instagram or whatever. I'm at Gun Shorts on Instagram. Preferably uh, shoot me something on Twitter, at JJ Reeves. Or just email me, james at tfb.tv, if you find it, so I can update the description below and maybe post on my Twitter saying somebody found it so all these people aren't rushing out to Montana to pick up a, a bottle of whiskey and a dumb 511. Who, who actually is going to do that? Probably not many people. Maybe it'll never get found. Maybe that pervert farmer will find it when he's driving around his F-150. Anyways, guys, wonderful trip. Love you. Take care. Thanks for watching.